SmackDown tonight possibly is right now the best show that WWE has ever produced. This shakeup has definitely benefited SmackDown more than it did Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw got a few decent people. But SmackDown got the majority of which was pretty good. So let's run through SmackDown's draft picks or trade picks uh, before we get on to the actual review. I've actually had everything I've actually I've actually had my thumbnail and all that set up a while ago. I was gonna do the review like about seven, about a bit earlier, but my girlfriend called and my uh, and, and I had dinner, so we'll go over it now. These are the draft picks for uh, SmackDown Live. We had the United States Champion Jeff Hardy, Mandy Rose, and Sonya Deville, Simone Joe, Big Cass, Asuka. Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows, Cesaro and Sheamus, Art Truth, The Miz, and NXT's Andrade Cien Almas and Zelina Vega, and Sanity's Eric Young, Alexander Wolf, and Killian Dane, but no Nikki Cross. But no Nikki Cross. And, and that's the one thing that really boggled my mind. I was like, what, what, what? Why is there no Nikki Cross? So, that was the only thing that bothered me. I was thinking, why is not Nikki Cross not involved in all this? So, it just really bothered me. It really, really bothered me. But, I'm pretty sure there's, I'm pretty sure there's going to be some news reports out there explaining why Nikki Cross was not brought up. But, in my opinion, Nikki Cross should have been brought up to the roster along with Sandy. I'll tell you what, SmackDown today was actually very, very good. I enjoyed the show. Especially I really enjoyed the tray shake up picks, man. SmackDown has SmackDown has right now probably the best tag team division. Monday Night Raw's tag team division doesn't look too bad as well. But right now I think But right now I think SmackDown Live has the best tag team division. Now, I know people don't like Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, but if you can actually build them up, they can actually be a legit, they can actually be uh, some good, they can actually be really good for the division, if you build them up. But, to wait and see. We had AJ Styles versus Rusev. Uh, this happened, this match only happened because Rusev uh, came out with End English and AJ Styles wanted Shinsuke Nakamura to come out and show his face because he is sick of him being a coward. He's sick of him being a coward, so he wanted him to show his face. Rusev, did, Rusev then came out. AJ Styles then wanted to fight, so Rusev gladly accepted his challenge. This match didn't really last long. AJ Styles won by disqualification. Then Brian came out. And then Ryan came out then and aided AJ Styles. Jeff Hardy is now a part of SmackDown Live and he is the United States Champion. Shelton Benjamin uh, is, is a heel and he wanted to take on the best of the best. So Randy Orton then comes out, looks to accept uh, Shelton Benjamin's challenge. And then Jeff Hardy comes out and and interrupts Randy Orton and takes the challenge for him. Jeff Hardy defeats Shelton Benjamin in a pretty good match. This was a pretty good match. And Jeff Hardy got the win with the Swanton. Luke Harper, or should I say Harper, versus Jay Uso. This match didn't really go for very long. Harper got the win with a discus clothesline. 
And the other thing that I found really, really bizarre about this is that they got Naomi getting involved in this whole situation. We don't need Naomi getting involved with this rivalry, the Uso Penitentiary, you know? It's called the Uso, they call themselves the Uso Penitentiary, and they want to put teams on lockdown. So how is, so how are the Usos going to put teams in lockdown if they've got their, if they've got Feel the Glow getting involved? So, please, get Naomi out of this storyline. There's no need, Naomi doesn't need to be in this storyline. She's supposed to be the Women's Battle Royal Royal Rumble winner, Battle Royal WrestleMania, WrestleMania Battle Royal Battle Royal winner. Sorry, I'm getting my tongue all mixed up. She was she's the WrestleMania Women's Battle Royal winner, and you've got her coming out protecting Jimmy Uso from the Bludgeons. That's the thing I have an issue with. I love Naomi; she's a good wrestler, but there's no reason for her to be in there. Um, Daniel Bryan, I believe, yeah, I believe Daniel Bryan had a backstage promo at this point. Renee Young asked him, why did he help AJ Styles? He said that he wanted to help AJ. And so he can team with him, so he can verse him, mess up with him, so that he can, uh, verse him again. Then, out of nowhere, was Big Cass. He got, he got cheered, because the crowd, I guess the crowd were kind of happy to see him. And he starts making fun of Daniel Bryan by his by his size, and calls him a little man. So it seems that Big Cass is continuing his role as a heel. Sin Cara had a match, and he takes on Samoan Joe. This actually legit shocked me. This actually legit shocked me because I did not think Samoan Joe was going to end up on SmackDown. Very happy with this pick, though. Very happy with this pick. Simone Joe beats Sin Cara easily in three minutes. Makes Sin Cara tap out to the Kuji Clutch. And Simone Joe, even on SmackDown Live, he, he still throws shade at Roman Reigns. See? You see, that's the thing about Simone Joe. Like, it doesn't matter if he's away from Roman Reigns or not. But the good thing is here, is that now that he's away from Roman Reigns... He can finally do his own thing. He can finally, you know, become. He can finally have the potential to become WWE champion. This is the reason why I wanted Samoa Joe on SmackDown because I thought I think the WWE title would look better on him than the Universal Championship. So that's my. So so that's what I'm saying there. Um. Joe begins to throw shade. He says that he, he will defang the Viper. He said he will beat Daniel Bryan and he will destroy AJ Styles. And he said that, and, he, and he's making a bold claim here. He's making a very bold claim that he is making a bold claim saying that he will come back to SmackDown Live with the Intercontinental and ripping the Universal Championship from Roman Reigns, if Roman Reigns somehow does defeat Brock Lesnar in Saudi Arabia. Kamala comes out. She does her thing, talking about her title win. And, you know, I, I, I was happy. I, I'm, I'm still going to tell you I am happy that for Kamala because now she's finally champion and all, but... My God, man. They're off to a... This is possibly one of the biggest and most silliest things that I've ever seen. I am not a fan of... I'm not a fan of... Of Carmella right now. Look, uh, I still like Carmella and all, but uh, I just really am not a fan of what she's doing now. I mean, like, I'm happy that she became champion, but Carmella doesn't need to come out and throw a malabration. I, I know people do, I know wrestlers tend to do this, 
when they win their first titles. But Carmella isn't going to be holding the title for very long. Charlotte then comes out. And she blames Billy Kay and Peyton Royce for the reasons why she wasn't the champion. Oh, boo-hoo. Poor Charlotte. Blaming the Australians for your failures. Speaking of that, that's what Billy and Peyton said when they came out. They said, you're blaming us for your failures. And and then Charlotte attacks the Iconics, and then it leads to a match between Charlotte Flair and Billy Kay. This is the thing that pissed me off. This is the only thing on SmackDown Live that actually legit pissed me off. This is Billy Kay's first match on SmackDown Live, and you have her tap out. You you have her lose on her SmackDown debut. Why? Oh man, I don't want to blur. I do not want to burst, man. I really do not want to burst my bloody blood here, because this, this legit pissed me off. I do not want to blow my top, and I don't want to bloody lose it. I don't want to lose it, because I was, I was absolutely fuming when I heard this happen. When I was on break and I heard that Charlotte beat Billy Kay, I was fuming. I was fuming bad. Why are you gonna have Billy Kay? Lose her first match. This damages the Iconics more than it damages Charlotte. Hashtag they do it for Charlotte. Hashtag they do it for Charlotte. Made no sense for Billy Kay to lose this match. They had Carmella on commentary. You, you couldn't tell me that you couldn't have Carmella provide the distraction and then give Billy Kay the win? This only hurts Billy Kay. This only hurts her because you're having her tap out in her first match. Makes no sense. I I, I can't trust. I, I just can't trust WWE with Australians. They did this to Emma when she was on Raw. They did this to Emma when she was on Raw. And I thought SmackDown could have at least given Billy Kay and Peyton Royce at least a bit of a chance. But no. Billy Kay taps out. In her first match. So at this point I'm thinking. I've got no trust. I've got no more trust in WWE. With Australians. I'm going to give them another week. I'm going to give them another week. And I expect Billy and Peyton to start winning. If they don't start getting wins. You know I'm going to be fuming. Even worse than I was when. I first heard Billy Kay lost. This loss made. Ap this loss. Man, absolutely, this loss should never have happened. This shows you how stupid creative is. Why in the world would Billy Kay and Rock, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce rock up? Why in the world would you have them rock up at, at on SmackDown, very excited that they're making their debut, and you tell them and you tell Billy Kay that you, that she's losing her first match on SmackDown? Do you know how she would feel? She'd probably feel absolutely embarrassed that she's being treated like a piece of shit. I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of this. Billy Kay and Peyton Royce deserve so much better than this. It's like I'm it's like I'm watching NXT all over again. They're only there to lose. Makes me sick. It makes me sick to my stomach that I had to sit here and watch two people who represents my country and I had to watch these two lose and be an absolute embarrassment because WWE Creative is too lazy to book them in the right way they need to be. They had a great impression last week. They, they showed the world how good they are last week and you're telling me that you couldn't capitalize on it? Jesus Christ. And let's make it worse, we got Oscar joining SmackDown. So Billy Kay and Peyton Royce are pretty much gonna be, you know, just like the way they were in NXT. Nothing but stepping stones for other talents. <sighs> makes me sick. Makes me sick. I'm glad Oscar's on SmackDown. I'm glad she is. I feel like her being on a different brand is definitely good for her. But ultimately, what is this going to do for Billy and Peyton? Absolutely, absolutely nothing. 
The only way that these two can be saved is that one of them win the women's money in the bank. Now, now, now I know a lot of people would be asking, and this isn't, I would say this isn't too hard to figure out, but people are asking, people would be saying, well, how in the world are we going to get Ronda Rousey versus Charlotte if Charlotte's still on SmackDown? Well, it's obviously going to be the same way with Oscar. Charlotte's going to win the Royal Rumble next year. She's going to be the second woman in history to win the Women's Royal Rumble, and she'll probably most likely challenge Ronda Rousey when Ronda Rousey is the Royal Women's Champion. That's how I see it. But ultimately, this was a stupid move. Charlotte taps out Billy Kay in her first match. Absolutely pitiful. Makes me want to vomit. AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan versus Aiden English and Rusev. AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan get the win via disqualification because uh, Shinsuke Nakamura comes from, comes out of nowhere like a like 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 a viper, I would say. Low blows AJ Styles, slithers away. Daniel Bryan's distracted, and then tur then he turns around, and Big Cass is in front of him, and Big Cass big boots him. So Big Cass is continuing to be a heel, and so and I, and I feel and I, and I had a feeling Big Cass was going to be drafted in the, to SmackDown, but there's one more there's one more thing I want to talk about. Before I go, that's the end of what that's the end of the show. But there's one thing I want to talk about, and that's the draft picks. I'm gonna go back because I'm on the WWE.com website as I'm talking to you guys. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's have a look. Like I said, I'm gonna go back on to the draft trades, the shakeup trades, and. As you would see, SmackDown got a total of 14 people. Count, well, counting the, counting the, counting the guys and girls that came to SmackDown plus Sanity, that's 14. To count the Miz, that's 15. Now, the question that I want to know is, and this is just completely ridiculous. Oh, this is just completely ridiculous. Why in the world, if you are the GM? Why in the world would you trade? Why in the world would you trade off someone like the Ascension for the Bar? Or why would you trade Bizango for? Why would you give SmackDown Gallows and Anderson? And why would you give SmackDown the Bar for the Ascension and Brizango? So is that what the Bar is worth? The bar is worth more than just the Ascension and Tyler and Tyler Breeze and Fandango. Now I know these two teams have a lot of potential in the world to be a great tag team, but why? Why would you trade the bar for the Ascension? If I was Kurt Angle, I tell Paige, "You want the bar? Will you give me the Usos? Or you give me the New Day? Otherwise, no trade." It's like Kurt Angle. It's like Paige just said who she wants. And so Kurt Angle told Paige who he wants, and they just agreed. And, 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 and Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville being on SmackDown is no surprise, because they're friends with Paige. And of course, I called it that they were going to be traded for Riot Squad. As soon as, as soon as I saw Riot Squad, I immediately knew that's who they were traded for. And the other thing that really angers the crap out of me is that why would Kurt Angle... Why would Kurt Angle trade... Natalia, or should I say, why would he trade Oscar for Natalia? If you want, if, if Paige, if Paige wanted Oscar, if Paige wanted Oscar, Kurt Angle should have said, I'll give you Oscar, but you need to give me Charlotte or Becky. Because Becky and Charlotte are good names to trade for, for Oscar. You don't just accept who she. You don't just accept who she gives you. 
So, Oscar is worth Natalia. Anyway, I don't care. I thought Natalia was a, was a good pick for Raw. But I don't understand why you would trade her for Natalia. I'm guessing Samoan Joe was traded for Bobby Roode. Again, why, again, why, again, I know Bobby Roode's a good talent, but again, why would you trade Samoan Joe? Why would you trade Samoan Joe away? Why would you trade Samoan Joe away for Bobby Roode? Makes no sense to me. And we don't know who the others would trade for, and why would Paige want our truth I'm guessing I'm guessing our truth was traded for Mike Canellis. Or maybe he was traded for Dolph Ziggler. I don't know who he was traded for. Maybe he was traded for Zack Ryder. But SmackDown Live right now has the best looking team. Has the best looking people on SmackDown. Sanity don't have Nikki Cross. I don't know why. I don't know why they don't have Nikki Cross. Nikki Cross is is more than ready for the main roster. She's well ready for it. What is she going to do in NXT? Andrade Cianomis and Selena Vega were called up. I think it's great. Now, the one thing... Now, I know in my NXT reviews, I've constantly said, I've complained... In my last NXT review, I complained that Andrade, that Zelina Vega tends to get involved in Andre Cianalmas' matches. Now, I don't want people to start complaining about Zelina Vega interfering in Almas' matches when he, when, when he starts wrestling on SmackDown. Because the annoying thing is, is that when Zelina Vega starts interfering in every Almas match, when he's competing for a title on SmackDown, or if he's on SmackDown, I don't want to hear people complain. Because she did this in NXT. She did this in NXT, so it's not going to make a difference now. You either like it, or you don't like it at all. That is what I'm saying. SmackDown, on the other hand, they got some pretty good, they got some pretty good picks. They got some really, really good picks, and I like these picks. Probably except our truth. Maybe our truth I don't agree with. I guess it's just another person for uh, for backstage catering for SmackDown Live. Our truth is just gonna be another backstage catering guy. And I'm get and of course Monday Night Raw don't really have any use for him, so let's just put him on SmackDown. Maybe if you want to, you can have Ty Dillinger and R Truth as a tag team. You know, get that. You know, get some more tag teams. I don't know, but SmackDown Live, I actually enjoyed it. I enjoyed SmackDown this week. Billy Kay's loss angered me. It made absolutely no sense why I had to watch her tap out in her debut match. But ultimately, SmackDown was a very good show. So ultimately, guys, I thought SmackDown was a good show, and I really enjoyed it. So anyway, guys, thank you all for watching for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hit the thumbs up. Comment your thoughts down below on what you think of the uh, SmackDown trades. And also let me know other things down below as well. And if anybody has any reasons why Nikki Cross was, is not on SmackDown with Sanity, you can you can just drop you can drop that. You can drop that down below as well. Anyway guys, thank you all for joining me. I'll talk to you guys later. Be sure to follow me on Twitter.